what I'd like to talk about now is naked mole rats. Although we've talked about them a little bit already. Um, and, which, and they are fascinating creatures. I, I mean, because they, they, both because of their social structure and because of the way that they, they live for so long. I mean, I think it's, it's amazing. So you did talk about uh, hyaluronin. And in particular, I think they, they have uh, kind of very long hyaluronin. So can mm -hmm. you talk about that in a little bit more detail? Like what is so special about the hyaluronin that they have and how does it protect them from cancer? And, you know, also the other diseases, because I, I believe that it's, you, know, you said that they don't get arthritis and they don't get cardiovascular disease. And, and so they're amazingly healthy. Yes, they are sort of a model of healthy aging. Uh, so we study them, we compare them to humans. So because this is a more valid comparison than human to mouse. If we study mouse, like everything goes wrong. Mm. <laughs> and the naked mole is a rodent that's a little bit more like human. Uh, so yeah, what's the role of hyaluronic acid in it? Um, you know, the first time we discovered it, that was like complete shock. We were looking for a mechanism that makes them resistant to cancer. Uh, and we noticed that when we grow uh, naked morat cells in a culture dish, they secrete something in the media that makes it viscous. Mm -hmm. And we found that it is hyaluronin. Like human cells would never make media viscous. If they, they make a hyaluronin, it's just very small mm -hmm. amount. Uh, but with naked morat cells, yeah, the media would get viscous. We could purify <laughs> hyaluronin from it. And what happens in vivo, what we see that hyaluronin prevents a proliferation of premalignant cells. So in general, long molecules of hyaluronin have anti-proliferative effect. So it slows down tumor development. Uh, so this is what we understand about its role. If let's say we take naked morat cells and uh, uh, knock down a gene that's responsible for hyaluronin production, and then these cells become more susceptible to form tumors. So that's what uh, mm -hmm. is very clear. Uh, now, how does it help naked morats otherwise? Mm -hmm. uh, we see benefits for arthritis uh, because hyaluronin, it's a component of um, you know, many connective tissues. It kind of fills spaces between cells. And there is a lot of hyaluronin in the joint tissue. Uh, and with naked morats, their joints are very robust. Uh, there is the cartilage is very strong. Um, and we tried experimentally to induce arthritis in them using the same model as in mice. And they just don't develop arthritis. Uh, so that helps them. Uh, hyaluronin also has anti-inflammatory effects on the cells, on immune cells. So that may help naked morats to avoid inflammation. Did you, did you try putting hyaluronin into like a mouse? Like put the, put the hyaluronin gene into a mouse and, and did that work? Yes, we have such a mouse. So we are, we've been working on it now for a few years. So I hope we'll uh, publish this paper soon, <laughs> uh, but what I can tell you, these mice actually live longer. Uh, mm. Not like naked morats, but they live longer than control mice. Mm. Interesting. So the, the length of the hyaluronin is, is important because it, it like, mm. it's like the longer it is, the I guess the more sticky or the more filling it is. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. But you looked at the epigenetic age of naked mole rats. Right. It's, so the epigenetic clock, you created a clock for, for them, mm -hmm. but they and they seem to move, I guess, in the same way, but slower than other animals. Is, is that correct? Yeah. So the clock in general, yeah, it reflects lifespan of an animal. So it would longer live species. Uh, it moves slower, but. Um, it kind of, it scales with maximum lifespan. That's what I would say. Um, I think for the mole rats, what was um, unexpected to us, uh, that even though mole rats are so resistant to age-related disease and they pretty much don't develop any age-related disease, 
so when we started working on this methylation clock, we didn't know. Maybe maybe it won't be taken. <laughs> maybe they have no epigenetic aging, but they do. Mm. Uh, which actually maybe you know, maybe it's a good sign. It means that you can um, sort of uh, separate epigenetic aging from physical deterioration. And maybe naked more found or evolved a way to do this. So that's what we that's what we are really interested in finding out how they do this. Right. Yes. So if you so we guess uh, we, how sure are we of their, their maximum age of around what 37 you said I, I mean if you look at the epigenetic clock and you kind of scale it against mm -hmm. like a mouse epigenetic clock is is around 37 their, their maximum lifespan have you tried that well you know it's difficult to say from epigenetic clock what the maximum would be because this is like mathematical no. formula it can continue <laughs> Right. So this is more really empirical observation. But yeah, from, from this, you know, if we scale, we look at the slope of it. Um, yeah, it, you know, it, it, we can see that there is progression of epigenetic age. Like they get older over time, uh, way slower than mice, of course. Um, now, how, do, how certain are we that the maximum lifespan is 37? We are not very certain because the number of animals that were observed to live to that age is very, very small compared mm. to, for example, human populations. We, we know a lot about human lifespan mm. <laughs> because, yeah, there are billions of people and we have uh, records for all of them. Uh, for most wild animals, the sample size is way smaller. Mm. And so for naked morats, yeah, there was an individual that made it to age 37. There were few other individuals that made it to age 30 or 32. Uh, that, so they may live longer than that. I would think probably not a lot longer. Right. And <laughs> because like they don't show age-related diseases, but when we had a couple of animals that were in their late 20s, I mean, they do slow down a bit. They don't mm -hmm. run as quick <laughs> as before. Right. So it does affect them eventually. It's just, it's just slow. Yeah, it's just yeah. very slow and it doesn't really bring um, a disease in, in a sense like we, we see it in human population. Right. So, so the, the main naked mole rats that you keep, um, what, why do they die in general? Well, they mostly die because they fight with each other and this is not uh, age dependent at all. So middle-aged animals actually die more from fights. Uh, they are eusocial animals. So they live in uh, big colonies uh, mm. where there is only one reproductive female, the queen, uh, mm. and she mates with one or you know two or three males that she selects. And then the rest of the colony are not reproducing. And of course, if the queen gets weak, or another female may, you know, get strong. And so the file, the fights uh, can start because they want to kind of, you know, climb up the ladder. And that's mm. really the main cause of death for our colonies. Um, we, we only had this colony for about 15 years. So we just didn't have many animals die of old age because we started from younger animals. So our colony, <laughs> <laughs> hasn't really reached that <laughs> point. So we don't see much age-related mortality, but that may be an artifact of just the age structure of the colony that we have. Right. Yes. No, no I, I get that. So you looked at senescent cells in mm -hmm. naked mole rats and in mice. Uh, I, yeah, it was naked mole rats and, and mice, not humans. But... There were some differences and some some similarities. So, so they, they 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 also, I mean, they have senescent cells, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but they are in some ways different from like mice senescent cells. Yes. So there were differences. Uh, we first of all, it was it required a high dose of stress uh, to mm -hmm. induce senescence in naked mole rat cells compared to mouse cells. 
And then another difference when we looked at uh, these, uh, the behavior of these cells, we looked at the expression profile, like what kind of genes they express. Um, mouse cells were more inflammatory. They expressed mm -hmm. many inflammation related molecules. And with naked morad cells, we could see fewer of those changes. Uh, so they do have senescence, but it may be, I would say, less harmful for them. Uh, one limitation of that study was that we uh, did all the work in cell culture. Uh, we didn't look at senescent cells in vivo in these animals. And that may be you know, another important thing to do to see that maybe they don't accumulate senescent cells in vivo. Although I must say, this is one of the reasons we didn't do it is that it's not easy to identify senescent cells in vivo. Yeah. So all the markers are, um, you know, there is a lot of noise in the system and mm. people know how to work with senescent cells in culture very nicely, but in vivo it becomes, uh, you know, there are a lot of artifacts. Uh, but I think ultimately to make a judgment of whether there is a difference in the role senescence plays in aging, one has to analyze it in vivo. In right. Naked mode. Okay. Yeah. Are, are you planning to do that, or is, is that is that kind of on your list of things? Yeah, we we would do that. Yes. <laughs> okay. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.